Okay, so we're looking at about a third of the people that universally treat their highs. Everyone understand what that means, right? Universal treatment means I'm just going to treat my highs certain times of the year. I don't care what my levels are. I'm just going to treat them. That's my strategy. Strategy number two is I'm going to treat based on a mite threshold, right? So I'm going to take my hive. I'm going to check my Varroa every month. And if my level gets so high, then I'm going to treat my hive with something. Those of you who do think that that's going to be the way you manage your Varroa this year, raise your hand. Okay, so we got a little bit less than universal treatment. Okay, option number three is I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to try to because I've heard. Believe me, I, 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 I've had lots of discussions with lots of people and try to understand. And I think what it is is I'm going to not. I'm not going to treat my bees because I want nature to sort out who's the strongest and who's going to survive. And therefore, I'm making the pool of genes better because let the weak go away and let the strong survive. Right. Those who are going to employ that strategy, raise your hand. Oh, come on. None. <laughs> those of you who are not brave enough to raise your hand, raise your hand. No, I'm just. Those of you who have no idea how you're going to manage Varroa this year, raise your hand. Well, we got. So we got a lot of people that committed to nothing. Right. That's a bad place to be. Right. Because if you commit to nothing, what are you going to do? Nothing. Right. At least commit to something. I, was, I say that to the resident. I was a physician and, and did academic medicine and, and worked with residents every night. I know this isn't relevant to bees. I said, please commit to something in the middle of the night. You may be totally wrong. You may be totally wrong. But if you don't commit to something, you don't learn anything, right? Because then you just like do nothing. And then what do you learn from doing nothing? Nothing, right? So you're going to commit to one of three things. You're going to commit to universe. You're going to commit to one. of Everyone here is going to commit to one of three things at the end of the day, right? You're going to commit to universally treat your bees. You're going to commit to plus or minus mite levels. You're going to commit to monitor your mites and treat based on threshold. Or you're going to commit to natural. You're going to commit to natural selection, right? Everyone's going to everyone's going to leave here today with some plan committed in their mind to how they're going to do varroa, right? That would be a big step forward, right? Because we're going to learn something. If you ask me, what I do. I universally treat my highs, and 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 there's there's reasons not to do that, right? There's reasons not to universally treat your highs, and one of the reasons not to universally treat your highs is what you can kill your queen with treatment. Your your every treatment has a toxicity, right? Every treatment has a benefit, for sure, but every treatment has a toxicity, and toxicity depends on what treatment you choose. And we're going to hear about the different treatments in a bit, but some treatments are more toxic than others, right? So, yes, you're exposing your bees to toxicity they wouldn't be exposed to if you did not treat, which could result in queen law, which could result in high failure, right? So, hey, shit, I just, I'm sorry. Hey, <laughs> shucks. I thought I was doing good. The next thing I know, I have a queenless hive that's not laying workers, and I should have never listened to that CCBA. They don't know what they're talking about. Okay, any other, any other downside to universally treating? Resistance, right? So we're starting to hear about resistance to, especially the uh, Amitraz or Apivar, the synthetic miticides, you know, like Kumafos used to be used before I was a beekeeper. We don't use Kumafos anymore because the bees are resistant to it, right? The bees are going to get more resistant the more we use, right? The more, the more antibiotics we get, I prescribe, the more resistance there's going to be, right? The more miticides we use, especially some of the synthetic ones, the more these mites are going to figure out, hey, you know, this might survive, this might didn't, you know, when it was exposed, this might continues to breed and we get a whole population of mites that are not uh, sensitive to whatever miticide we're using. For the most part, the organic, the organic treatments, the acids, the oxalic acid, the formic acid, they probably work by a way that uh, more physical. But maybe eventually we we get these uh, mites that have exoskeletons that are three times thicker than other mites. I don't know, right? So it's possible that even over time, and that you're going to be resistant to the. Uh, now Chris thinks a lot about bees, so that's why we're here. <laughs> I think it's important that you let the bees. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, 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 yes, you do. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be speaking. As well as doing your best to keep them. Right. So if, if you're universally treating, you're not really encouraging the bees to. No, you're doing, you're doing the opposite. You're also encouraging poor genetics to continue on instead of having good genetics continue on where you're going to defend, the bees will be able to defend themselves somewhat. They may not be able to defend themselves all the time, but there'll be less need to do applications. I'm not saying you don't do them, but if you see them, that's bad or you get a high count, yeah, do them. But I'm, I'm a big fan of splits and brood breaks. Speak up. Um, Speak up. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> Split We're at church break. right now. <laughs> We're talking sites. <laughs> the problem is you got, you got honey keepers, uh, or honey keepers. You got beekeepers that are beekeeping for honey, for money. Okay. And the money overrides what's good for the bees. That's how I see things. Everybody's different. Okay. Could that, that the reason why we're where we're at is because of commercial beekeeping. Because if, if they if they if they didn't rely upon making the almighty dollar, maybe they would have let the bees just go and adapt and get used to it and we wouldn't be using so much treatments and we wouldn't have these weak genetics. I have I'm a big I'm a person that doesn't like to get every time man steps in, we mess things up. So I'm a big person on doing the best you can to let them adapt. And maybe a lot of people will disagree with this. And that's fine. Everybody has their opinions on beekeeping. Everybody does things different ways. So do you do you might check and treat based on threshold or you can go treat at all? I do splits. Do splits. I do splits and brood breaks. Okay. Uh, if I have to, I, I'm not worried about my, my honey intake. I'll pinch a queen just so there's a brood bait. I don't care. Let them make a new queen. That's just my ver my version of it, okay? That's how I look at things. I've been doing it for five years. I've lost two hives, and that was to starvation because they got robbed in the wintertime or in the fall, and they didn't make it through because my cluster was so small. Do you mind if I ask you something personal? Go ahead. Knock yourself Just and I go back a little bit, so I think we're okay Knock here. Knock yourself out. Yeah, nice. We're okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, do you, do you ha over your years of beekeeping, which I guess is five or six now? It's five. Five. Yeah. Ha have you ever applied a miticide to your hive? Yes, I have. In the very beginning, because I was told to do that, and I was using I used apple bar, and I also used formic, and I lost queens to formic. Okay, and then I realized after I did the formic treatment, when you're doing formic treatments, you don't keep the queen in the brood box. You cage her, put her up in the super, then do your treatment. And then you'd have to worry about the queen getting off by the the foreman. So and after you, two days, you put her back down. Do you do mite counts on your hives? Uh, at the end of the year. I'll at the end of the year. It. So you're, rely, you're, 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 you're relying on IPM, basically, by brood breaks and splitting. That's me. Yeah. To, to, to cultural, cultural to, to control your mite levels. But you're not 100% sure it works, but you know you have good winter survival. I haven't had any problems. I haven't had any problems, but that's that's me. No, I mean that's it's good and, to. And, and, and in all fairness, okay, my apiary might be far away from other people's apiaries, yeah. okay, and I'm not getting the drifting bees from Carol's hot. Okay, but but you, you, that's that's where I'm at. That's how I and everybody does things differently, and that's fine. You know, you, you can keep these the way you think is fit. Yeah. I'm not an expert, just so just so you know. The question was. Let, let me put it this way. My mic my, my counts at the end of the year, there are some hives that are fine, and there are some hives that need to be looked that need to be taken care of. And what I try to do is, end of year, when I'm going into the winter, like October, okay, I'll do an oxalic acid treatment, but I don't do four. I do two. I knock them down. Because in the same sense, you know, you realize you have mites that are there, and the bees have to deal with them. They have to learn how to deal with things, you know. Otherwise, you don't, you don't, you don't adapt. So I just I treat them twice, and I haven't had a problem doing it. It worked for me. But that's me. Like I say, I might have an isolated case. My bees may be more hygienic because I've been doing this, and now it's easier for me to take care of them. I don't know. I don't have. I, I don't do all the science and data and taking down notes possible. I just wing things and think, see how it works. And so far, it's working for me. So that's all I can tell you.
Okay, I'm done. Now get off my stool. No, I mean, I, I, this is this is our club. This isn't my club. This is our club. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's great to hear the, the alternative uh, perspective, right, to how to do this, you know. Uh, and they're, at the end of the day, obviously, Chris committed to a decision path by committing, right? Not because of laziness or not because he just decided – you know, you know, he's thought about it. You know, he's thought about what he's doing. And he understands what he's doing. So therefore, hey, I respect that. You know, I respect that person who sits down, thinks about what they're doing and can give you a rational for why they're doing it that way. And that was great, Chris. No, I really, I really appreciate that. I don't agree with it, but I do appreciate it, you know, um, because I don't think many people are as, as dedicated to probably what he's doing from a cultural standpoint to make that work. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think... There's probably things that he's doing that he doesn't even know he's doing that makes this work. I'm not sure what they are, but <laughs> uh, let's. So, where was I? So you, we're going to talk about the methods. Please. We're going to talk about the methods. If you decide, no, it's good. This is why we're here, right? To be entertained and to learn something. So we're going to talk about if you decide to universally treat your hides, or if you decide to to check your mite levels, and if your mite level gets higher than two percent which is six mites in an alcohol wash or six, six mites for 300 bees. And you decide that you're going to apply a miticide. We're going to go over the miticides now, right? So that's what we're going to do. And we have different people going over different miticides. So what miticide do you want to hear about first? Brooks miticide first. So whatever Brooke has, we're going to hear about Brooks miticide. Now we chose people to talk about miticides that they actually use, right? So Everyone who talks about whatever might decide they're applying, they use. So feel free at the end of it to question them. And because they're the experts as much as any expert in the club about what might decide they're talking about. Yeah. And granted, so I have used, so I'm going to be talking about uh, Amitraz, which is an active ingredient in Apovar strips, not to be confused with Apigard or Apolite Var, because they, they all have very similar names. So I'm talking about Apovar would be uh, the, if you're going out to buy it. Um, and it's really easy to use. Uh, it's basically a plastic strip, looks like a bookmark. It's got a little uh, flap in it that you just stick in between your frames. Uh, you use two strips per five frames. So for a 10 frame box, that's two strips per box. Um, and the way it works is it's, got, it's coated with a chemical uh, and the bees have to con come in contact with it. So you want it to be in the center of the brood chamber where um, the bee, it's a high traffic area where they're going to touch it, get it on their bodies, spread it to the other bees. Um, it actually doesn't kill the mites on contact. It paralyzes them. They fall off of the bees and they starve to death. Um, so it needs a long time to work. Uh, so you need to leave it in the hive for a minimum of 42 days and a maximum of 56, so six to eight weeks. Uh, during that time, you cannot have honey supers on, which is one of the disadvantages because you do not want this chemical. It's a synthetic chemical, not compatible if you're trying to do an organic operation, um, and it will get into your honey. Not great. Don't do it. Um, and yes. So when you said you would put two mites, just for the people that yeah. are brand new, I'm totally a, into visual learning. Yeah. So where would right. you put those two? So trips? I would put it. Um, probably you want it to be about two, uh, frames apart. So I would put one here and one here. So you want it to be right in the middle, uh, you know, assuming that your, uh, brood is right in the center of your hive and not shifted one way or the other. Uh, over the course of the treatment, uh, if you find that your bees are putting a lot of propolis or anything on top of the strip, you may need to script this, uh, scrape them off so that the chemical uh, is more exposed because again, it works on contact. They have to walk on it and touch each other and spread um, the treatment. Um, or if you know if the brood chamber shifts, um, you, you should probably move the strips as well. Thank you. <laughs> yes, no worries. Um, and it should work. Uh, so this would probably be a good product to use uh, either in the very early spring before you put any honey supers on, uh, because you need to have these strips out at least two weeks before you put the supers on, or in the fall afterwards, um, after you've taken the supers off. 
because versus some of these other treatments, one of the advantages of this, um, in spite of it being synthetic and um, a chemical, and you know, some people are uneasy about that, there are no temperature requirements. So you can use it when it's very cold out, you can use it when it's very hot out, it doesn't vaporize or anything, and um, so it should work at any time of the year. Um, so that's about it for that one. I don't know who's going next. Which is awesome because that's all the stuff I had on here too. Oh, cool. Um, with some subtle differences actually. So I'm actually talking about formic acid. Uh, it's Mitoway Quick, quick Scripts and Formic Pro. Uh, the Formic Pro is actually a newer formulation that is 14 or 21 days, depending on how you want to treat. The Mitoway Quick Strips are seven or 21 days. Uh, it is an organic acid. It shows up naturally in your honey either way. Um, Unlike with the Apivar, uh, the functional method is attacking the mice in the brood cone. So it's actually under the caps. Uh, it targets their reproduction, their reproductive cycle. It does have very strict temperature limits of 50 to 85 degrees. Uh, if, you're, if the weather gets above 85 in the first three or four days of that treatment, you will kill your meat. Uh, like it is a fairly aggressive, like it vaporizes itself. It's in pads about yay big. And you put them on like this in your brood box. So right in the middle of your brood box is one pack per pot right into bees. Um, Brooks was a lot better presentation with a lot more thorough details than mine. But um, yeah, happy to talk about it and answer any questions as well. Um, Are those, can you, I thought I read in the direction that you can just leave them on. You don't have to take them off in the direction. You can. So a big, strong hive will absolutely kind of eat through the pads and, and clean them away just like anything else that's in the hive. A weaker hive won't, and you'll end up with these pads still in there. You can keep them on with honey supers, which is the lovely thing about the Formic. Um, but yeah. And then I think they're ready to catch the compostable. They are compostable, yes. Now, that said, it's also a anytime you're dealing with them, wear rubber gloves that you're going to throw away. Don't use your lovely leather gloves because it is, in fact, acid. If you're putting it on and it's kind of warm out, you will feel it when you're breathing. So respirators also sometimes recommended. I don't do that, but that's my choice. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like a pad. It's a, you know an acid-impregnated pad that you can put on top, and they're wrapped in paper or plastic. Uh, it, it vaporizes. It evaporates into the, the hive. And then that acid that's in the air now in there actually penetrates in through the brood cappings. Then it, oh yeah, because then it evaporates way too quickly and the acid levels in the air will spike too much. So there's two ways you can, I'm sorry, I was, go for it. Be behind you, so be a, but there's, there's, there's two, performing for my way quick strip, you can either use one pad or two pads. Yep. And if the one pad is, is a treatment and then two weeks later you put one pad, and the two pads at one time at once, yep. and the toxicity goes down if you use the one pad versus the two pad, but your effectiveness at the, uh, at the, 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 the one pad doesn't get your brood stuff underneath your, underneath your, uh, brood capping. So, but it basically works by, as Chris said, just by, you know, just off gassing. Now, with that said, there's a, you open the packet of formic, there's a, like a, like a papery thing that's around the, Yep, but leave that on, right? Because otherwise you're going to you're you're going to off gas really quickly. You're going to kill your hot. So, with all these methods, please take a moment to read the package insert before you apply your hive. I'm guilty of not doing that too, but it's all in there, right? Yeah, um, and the efficacy of the the formic acid is something like up to ninety eight percent at this point still. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, there's no sign of existence yet with the acid. Questions about formic? Yes. I would take him out. The, 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 the first, the first, it, I mean, like the first, like three days. The first three days is really what, Once what you get that, it becomes less effective Correct. anyway. Like the, the acid levels are coming down. But if like I put him in today and then tomorrow it was 90 degrees, I would absolutely take him out. So can I ask a stupid question? If you don't want to eat above what you 85. 85. 85. Mm -hmm. what it's a tough one, you know, because you you, rec you recommend doing it in July. Honey safe. Huh? Honey safe. What, why July? Is because July is the time when you start to see an increase in your mite level, so you're just trying to knock them down. Uh, but you're right, trying to find a three-day window in July that the temperature, there's usually one or two windows in July 
where the temperatures will work for, for formic. Yeah. So um, with that said, the three days is the important window. So, you know, if the first three days it looks OK, you're probably OK. And you're probably I, I, I can't say this because I don't do a one pad, but I assume the one pad risk is a little bit smaller than the two pad risk, too, potentially. Right. Yeah. So the one thing about all these treatments is most of the mites are going to, especially with formic or all of them, they're going to be out in the nurse bees. They're going to be near the brood. So if you have a stack that's like five high without a queen excluder, and you got brood all the way through that stack, you got to think about that before you start putting your, before you start treating. You know, you probably want to get your brood down to a box or two before, if you're running without a queen excluder. So one Again, other that note. is not going to be in the package insert, but just my just common sense a little so bit. So the formic instructions actually cover that a bit as well, which is that if your brood nest moves during treatment, chase them, move your treatment. You, know, you do you need can, to keep the treatment around the brood. You can tell when the last time I read the formic insert. I read it <laughs> three weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to inspect them again next weekend, right? Okay. Like I'm not in there like every other day. I'm in there like every week at that point. And I'm going to move it if they do move much, but... Cool. What are they in for? Two weeks. Two weeks. It's 14 days. Or the mitoid quick strips are one week. Uh, yeah, they're slightly different, the, the Formic Pro and the mitoid quick strips, you know? Yep. So just read the answer. But it's basically two weeks or 10 days. Charlie. Charlie's doing oxalic. Here's your mic, Charlie. All right, this is a little show. <laughs> Cheapest medications for the most expensive to deliver. Uh, oxalic is the cheapest once you get the equipment. It's pennies of treatment. Um, it, like formic, is a organic acid. Uh, the difference being that it does not penetrate the brood cavities. So, ideally, the time to do it is when you're broodless. Um, the best time recommended is late fall to get ready for winter, say between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, it does have a low temperature, actually. You're supposed to not use it below 37 degrees, according to the, uh, the literature. Um, just because the, the bees cluster together, and the vapor will not penetrate the cluster when it moves in. It is, uh, since it doesn't uh, penetrate the brood cappings, 80 to 85% of the varroa are under those cabins. So if you do do it while you have brood, you're not able to easily do it in one, one treatment. They recommend doing it in treatments over a 12-day period, which would cover the cap brood, uh, the cap brood duration. So you could do it day one, day six, day 12. Um, part of the problem with that is that between the treatments, you have varroa that leave the cappings and go under go in the brood and get caps before you reach the next treatment. But it is a good method to um, knock things down if you find that you have high mite numbers. The couple different devices, a couple different methods of uh, application. The, uh, this is the Verox, it's the standard I think this is one of the first ones that came out. Um, you use a, a gram per box. A gram is equal to roughly one level quarter tablespoon. Can you say one box? One, one brew box. Now you can use it. It's, it's either eight or ten. If you're doing nukes, it's half of that. While you're you're doing uh, brew, so well, if you okay, so if you had three mediums, would be the equivalent of two two large brew boxes. Oh God, I'm getting I'm getting tongue tied. Um, 
it does require power that there's multiple ways. One of them is a car battery. It does heating it does take a lot of energy. So I have a an old car battery. It doesn't have to be a great one. This here will do 10 or 12 hives. Um, there's another method. It's kind of neat. This is a a plug-in version, which you can use on an extension cord. Um, you put the same amount of uh, oxalic in here, and it blows it through a hole. Now, what you have to do, you have to make sure that you seal up your hive. I uh, you usually seal it up. Seal up the hive. Put your uh, acid in there. Put it in the entrance. Seal it up with foam or something, rags. You heat it. It usually takes anywhere from two and a half to four minutes. Uh, you really have to time it yourself. Just do it out the air one time to get an idea. And as you do more hives, it will tend the time will tend to get a little longer with the battery completes. Sort of like the solid acid. Yes. Yes. And it's random. It's the power. Well, there is. There's actually three. There's actually three things. There's there's powder, which most people would use. Now they have a uh, a product called Easyox, which is a pellet, like a little tablet, which is one gram tablets, so you don't have to worry about measuring it. And there's also uh, another one, which is a time released impregnated strip, which is still not released. It's been approved by the EPA, but they're waiting on. Now that's not actually been approved. If you, but but the, the, the Varox sand is, they're awaiting label changes. Um, with the EPA, the label is the law. So they're very critical about exactly what it says. So they had some changes and it's still being held up for that. But it's supposed to be here this year. So the nice part about that is that you can put that in for 42 to 56 days, just like the apple bar. And so I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head when you put it and you heat it, mm -hmm. it's still in that dry color form. You're not adding all the oh, water to make it. No, what it does, yeah, it vaporizes. It actually sublimates. It doesn't melt. It just goes from solid to gas. Okay, and it's 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 in a gaseous form for a, a few minutes, and then it recrystallizes all over everything. So. They really don't know the, the, the reason why it kills the mites, but they, they assume, they theorize that it's the mites have a, a sticky pad on the bottom of their feet, and they believe that it, that's their method of transfer, but they really don't have a, a proven method. Now, though it does not kill the bees, it is harmful to the bees. You know? So it's not something that's meant to use over and over and over again. It will harm your bees in, in time. The other method, there is a dribble method. Um, dribble method, you normally, uh, you can either use, mix the uh, oxalic acid with a one-to-one -one sugar syrup or a glycerin. Um, you take and put it in a syringe, you can use a, a 50 milliliter or 50 milliliters in a syringe, um, and it, it takes a little practice. You use a syringe, and you just just try it a couple of times and see. You can see how much you're you're expanding, and what you would do is you spray it down on top of the bees. You don't put it on the on the top bars. So if there's bees here, you're, you spray here, spray here, spray here or dribble there, um, you're only able, you're only supposed to use no more than 50 milliliters in your hive. There's also a method you can actually, you're you're able to spray a uh, oxalic solution onto a package. And I did talk about the, uh, let me ask for uh, questions. I know I missed them. No. <laughs> Which which brings up another point. 
one of the reasons I don't want to show it is because uh, oxalic acid vapor is very, very, it's like chlorine. Um, you know, the formic, it's tough on the nose. The oxalic acid vapor actually will harm your lungs. And if they recommend using a respirator with an acid vapor cartridge on, um, if you are like some people where you figure, well, I'll just stand down wind. Hope that wind doesn't change, because I can tell you for a fact that it'll gag you. Um, they don't also recommend wearing uh, chemical resistant gloves and eye protection. You put either one or two grams, depending on how many brew boxes you have, and you just clip it onto the battery and time it. Usually takes between two and a half and four minutes for it to completely vaporize. Um, take the un unhook it at whatever the time would be, four minutes. Leave it sit in there for two minutes. Still sealed up. After two minutes, you can take the uh, probe out and go on to another one. Just take it out and seal it back up. You want to leave the box sealed up for a total of ten minutes. Um, the I've never used this great new tool. You basically have a little hole in the box. Um, you put it in and you fire away. Seal it up, leave it sit for 10 minutes. Yes, because you've used it. I was just thirty foot online. These things are pretty damn expensive. That thing was a buck forty nine. And the reason I got the phone online and not the cables yeah. is because I have a jack for the battery. And that plug right into my three hundred watt battery, and I'm set just fine. This company makes battery models, so yeah. everything but the way over what they think of the older working one is what I have. So I didn't want to wait, so I bought the plug in. But they made the plug in the wall battery, and the computer battery, and something else battery, and you know, throw this all the way. It's amazing. For that, it's one ninety five. It's still really amazing. You know? And yeah. the guy's really nice. I got one. I used it the first day, and I I can address to the set because. I hadn't had my stuff on yet, and the thing was leaking. And I called the guy, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. But like I said, you want another car, you can't get it together. Send it back to me, and I'll do it. But I was able to get it together, and I gave the left hand plus the car license, but he didn't think it was going to come away. But the company, the customers are just amazing for that. If anybody wants to link, I can send it to you. Hi. I have a Another option if you, for brood, something I never saw, is a frame cage. You can actually put a put your queen in a frame in this in your box and let it go broodless with the queen in there. So the only brood you'll have is on that one frame. You can then take that frame out and do a vaporization and get all your mites. It will kill 90 some percent of the mites. That's just another idea. Well, no, you just you can move it to another hot. You know, well, you yeah, it's full of brood, or it's full full of brood. So yeah, you you would probably get rid of that. Yeah, we could do that. All right. No, you don't think so. It's out there instead of just two grams for double bond or like that. Now, yeah, that, that, that's the, that, you know, that's the stickler is the label is the law by the EPA. Now, if you go to Randy Oliver's website, uh, Scientific Beekeeping, he does all the research. He's doing it under an experimental permit. Um, and 
he's got great ideas and great methods, but they're not yet officially approved. So I guess as a club, we can't present them. We won't. That's correct. Um, like I said, the other thing I didn't mention is it is a, it, you are allowed to leave your supers on. Originally, that wasn't the, the case, but that did come about, I think, in 22. There's some paperwork behind these from 2017, and that's what you have to point out. Is that they now say that says you can't leave it on, but yeah, that was right. Yeah. Yeah, you can leave it on. Yes. No, actually, it's it's a question of, of whether or not the the uh, you use the equivalent amounts. Is that what you're asking? It is the same. the the reason The reason for the glycerin is the sugar water. The bees will ingest the sugar water, so they're also ingesting the oxalic acid. They do not like glycerin. The glycerin does stay on. It's, 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 it does adhere to them a little bit better than the sugar water. I really don't know. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're both a one-time thing, as Carol says. Um, just lost it. I'm sorry. <laughs> was is oxalic no 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 is glycerin and the sugar water compatible comparable interchangeable okay well the, the concentrations that you mix them are not the same I, I do not have the table for them um, if you go to scientificbeekeeping.com he does have lists that show all the um It may be. I don't. I don't know. Um, actually, I do have it. I do have it. Um, they also recommend that you don't make any more than you're going to use, because it doesn't store well. If you see that it's uh, starting to get cloudy, it's um, it's shot. Throw it out. Yeah, it is super cheap. Okay. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, one of the ways to, to deal with not with having resistance to this is to not use the same one all over and over again. Can you do half a bar one time of the year and oxalic another time? Actually, that's the way you want to do. It. You don't want to use the same treatment. You want to you want to use different treatments. Use apple bar. Use formic. Use uh, oxalic to um, minimize resistance to it. Um, and, you know, some of them you can use, like the formic has a temperature, but it does go under cappings. The oxalic doesn't go under the cappings unless you, you well, actually, it doesn't go under the cappings, but if you use the extended release, which is coming out, that will kill any of the mites or potentially kill the mites between when they come out of the brood and go back in. But yeah, you want to mix it up. So Julie, I, I actually don't know that it takes over. Yeah, I think you might be able to. But they, I don't know. Um, did, did you go to that Robin Underwood organic beekeeping management class? Was that you? Okay. So she gave us a pamphlet. It was like four pages. I tried to scan it. It all came up as page one, but I'm going to put it on the website. It goes through the different times of the year that she recommends doing the different treatments and the temperatures. It's great. I'm, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it up on the monitor today, but I can put it on the website. Would anybody be interested in seeing that? Um, I'll make sure I find a way to get it up there. So I use the uh, Apigard or Apigard, and you can buy the big tub if you have a bunch of hives. You can also get them. It's small little single dose uh, things where you peel the things off. Uh, it's organic. Um, it's a gel, and we can open this up later. You can smell it and see it. Where do you get the water? Um, and it expires. It takes you got two years to use this up. And uh, I put on top of the hive 
with a spacer. The bees have to go get at it. They have to. They drag it out of the hive. You put a, the gel on it. If you don't have the single packet things, you got this. You put it on like an index card on top of the hives. You need to put a shim on there, like inch or two size shim, so the bees can get at it. You can't just squish it between your brood boxes. Um, they drag it out of the hive. They don't like the smell. And uh, it's also how fast it outgasses does depend on the temperature. They like today, you can use the full dose. And then two weeks later, you do another full dose of 50 milliliters. Um, it comes with a syringe. And you suck it up from this into the syringe and then just put it onto the card. Once you get a sense of the, how much that is, you can just use your hive tool and put it on the card. Um, two weeks later, you do another dose because it doesn't kill the mites under the tappings. So you've got to, uh, um, do it twice. The other, if it's hotter, what I do is I use half dose. That's approved. You can do 25 and then a week later, so two weeks later, do another 25. And then uh, if you want to another week after that, uh, put another 25 on. And it's okay for nukes. It's really small nuke, you might want to use about 12 instead of 50. I, I do 25 on my, my nukes, which usually tend to be larger. Um, it's organic, so I don't worry about... I, I do all mediums, and it's hard to keep track of what frames were, were treated and which ones weren't. Um, and I don't worry about that because it's organic, <laughs> and it's already in honey, and it's going to be the next year before there's possibly honey put in. Yeah, you can buy a little, little, applicator. little applicator. You peel the label off, leave it in the hot. You do need to put the shim on. Okay. And so what does the The same thing, just a big dose of it. They'll feel a whole bunch of hives. Um, the first time I did, I did it between the brood boxes with a shim, and they then put all kind of burr comb in there. And made a mess. I now put it on top of that and let it go down. Oh, the bottom. It's good to close off the bottom. That's what I say. The front should be fully open, no no uh, entrance reducers. Don't look inside. The it, well, it's got a, it's time more with a twenty five percent. Other ingredients seventy five percent. So it's a, it's got to be a slow release. So. Yeah. Wow. That was it. Green drum coat. Oh, yeah. That's the only thing you remember. That's so great. Genetic selection and all. Oh, what's a group break? Great. So, uh, a group break is basically when you stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to have to ask a lot of people. Sure. No, thank you. So the question is, we talk about brood strains, you know, like given that, you know, what the brood strains provide, and that's good. You know, the lights are reproducing in the brood, right? So the idea of a brood strain is to stop the bees from laying, or the, for the hives to get clean, let's say, or you make a split, or it's changed to clean, or some reason why, over a three-week period, there's no brood that you make in that time, right? And therefore, all the bodies that have no brood going. So they're all outside of the group, and then you get bees that are identical that sort of kill or bite or get rid of the mites themselves. And the mites don't have any way to clean that because they can't want to be the Right, so there's a natural group rate which is performing, right? So one of the advantages of the performing is that, you know, the, the queen takes off, right? With one of bees, and that high left here is queen until it gets into the so, uh, that's a natural food link, right? The other thing is you can make a split, and you can artificially make it, look at the queen out, and leave that high queen list. And that's what we're doing. Or you put the queen in the cage, and, and, and not let her like that the whole time, and that's what we're doing. So you just try to stop the reproduction of the mites and give all the mites outside of the food so that these can, you know, go attack. Yeah, and the brew spike is three weeks, right? And the reproductive cycle of the mice is fast enough that it's still like that much issue. No, the mice will die off, but they don't have a chance to reproduce. They're outside of the cabin, so the bees consume them or, or groom them or whatever they need to get rid of them. It's a natural way to populate the cabin. It gives the bees an opportunity to spread. Yeah.
And you know, there's a there's a threat for sure, right? I mean, there's a lot of how sick is sick, right? We all we all carry some we all carry some disease usually, right? You know, but you know, if our if our if our if our virus load or our pathogen load stays below a certain level, we continue to exist, right? Assuming that we have healthy and things like that, right? But if that pathogen level gets above our ability of our bodies to to fight it off, we be cranked, right? And the same way with growth, right? There's a certain level of production in time. It's a viral time to stay above a certain level, then your high doesn't get sick, right? It seems healthy. And that's kind of the, the you can never really, even the treatments never really uh, get your spike levels to zero. You're just trying to go below a, whatever that threshold is. And that threshold moved through the years, too, right? When I started meeting with the threshold was like three or five percent of mites, you know, like you don't see a high until your mite wash was not well. And then it kind of went down to anything over one percent, now it's two percent. So that threshold level sort of moves around because uh, you're you never expect that no mites in the high is not not going to happen. You don't need it. So food base is one way to interrupt the reproduction of the mite because once the mites are reduced in the high at a certain level, you're going to go with this. You know, you can tend your like I, I did ten mic watches last week, right? At at a date of zero one, zero one, zero one, zero one, two, one, or whatever they were. Some of the higher than two. Most were zero and one. So that could change. I hope it doesn't. But just because you have one mic boss is zero or one, then you check next month. It's it may be zero or one, but it also may be eight. And then that eight sort of turns to twenty and sort of so if you give a good break it's that one, it doesn't have the chance the mic don't have a chance to be two to be go up and kind of stay at that level. It also allows the bees the opportunity to groom and knock them down a little bit. And that's what you're trying to do. You can't wear treatment. You're not, treatments are not like getting rid of all the mites in the hive. It's making a level where your virus levels aren't out of control. I hope I'm making sense. I'm probably not. But it's also uh, virus levels. It's also virus levels, but you also have to worry about uh, the mites are feeding on your bees. They're lowering the immune system of your bees and makes them more vulnerable to the virus load. So it's a two-stream system. More more mites, more virus, more mites, lower uh, immune systems. And then it's the combination of the two. So you're basically keeping things in check by keeping the, the populations down. Yeah, I have a question about the brood break method. Um, is it recommended or for anybody who has used this method before um, do you do any kind of a powdered sugar dusting to help facilitate or to encourage the bee hygienic behavior during the brood break yeah during the brood break just to try to facilitate more increased grooming well. basically dust your bees with powdered sugar and that dusting of the bees don't like so they're going to groom Whatever mites are attached to the bees, they're going to be grooved out because they're trying to get the sugar off the bees. So it, it, it's a grooming system, really, to, to get the grow off the bees. Uh, people think that, in, you know, you do it in the summer, it's humid, it may not work because of the humidity, and how effective is it? But at the end of the day, that toxicity is low, so it's time to be a thing. <laughs> Paul, was it you that brought up about the... Um Drone, 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 green cone. And so another thing you can do is just use a medium frame. Just so put a medium frame in your deep box, and they build drone on the bottom of that. Rather than freezing your frame, you just cut that off, light up your fire pit, get rid of it. Give it to your chickens. Give it to your friends' chickens. You know, there's all kinds of other complementary, I guess you'd say, out there for the and you can buy a lot of them on YouTube and on some online. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to, you know, most of them are probably having grown such a low toxicity, right? Because you have to see get toxicity. Uh, if you're going to do that, I, I would just recommend just checking by itself, right? That's the best way to know whether or not you're infected or not. You know, checking by itself. If it's, if it's, uh, if it's, uh, if it's uh, three mice per 300 bees and you, and you spray your concoction of whatever you're on, and next month you still have a level of three per 300 bees, you know, 
that's great. You know, I mean, whether or not that's because whatever you sprayed on it, I don't know, but you know, that's a good outcome, right? I mean, so I'm not anti complimentary at all, but as a club, we all, we can only say what's, you know, what's, what's, what's approved. Efficacy, effective wow. so. wise. I love to talk. So more questions, the better. <laughs> and this isn't on my time. This is on your time. So Donna can't shut me up. Yes. Yeah. Well, why don't you do a brood break and then turn around and zap them with uh, like an oxalic acid treatment? Yeah, no, you could do that. That's what I think uh, uh, Charlie said that you, you you give it a brood break and therefore there's nothing underneath the cappings and then you, either you vaporize or you can dribble right either you know you can dribble in the summer we don't think about dribbling we always dribble in the winter but if if you're truly broodless uh, a, a dribble as far as I know is just effective as a vaporization so if you don't own a vaporizer but you could still apply oxalic by dribbling it and, and I believe be equally as effective. In, in that scenario so yes you know and and sometimes and we don't do it i don't do it but i'm like oh sh I, I gotta watch my person because we do have kids in the audience uh you know my, shocks my, my, my highest queen list there's no brood i don't know if i'm queen right why don't i just dribble that high i don't know why i don't because i'm lazy and i don't feel like doing it but right i mean there, there you go there's a perfect high that you could dribble get all the mites down and be done with it for the year right if you wanted to but i don't catch a swarm, yeah. that's an opportune time to do an oxalic acid treatment before they start laying. Because then, if they're coming to you, you can call the swarm, it has mites. They have you to start laying, just like you're talking about doing the brood break and doing your doing your oxalic treatment. A swarm basically is a brood break, so you, you catch a swarm, you treat them. And, and just remember one other thing, not to put fear into anybody's hearts, and Frank's still around here, I guess Frank gone? No, Frank's still here. Sorry, don't listen, Frank. Some of the bees that come up from the south are a little bit ahead of the bees that come up in the north, right, early on. So, you know, and packages do come up with mites for the most part. So, you know, just if you have a new hive, you know, don't be, don't assume that that new hive doesn't have mites in it because of whatever reason. You know, the only way to know if you don't have mites is to, is to check for mites. And I don't know if they're at higher risk or not, but they're, they're, they're clearly at risk, you know. Even if it was started as a package, because mites do come with packages. I don't. I don't know if the package that you bring up or treat it or not, Frank. Beforehand, I don't know. Some people do. Who's talking? Frank is. I, I put Frank on the spot a little bit tonight, so I want Frank to respond. <laughs> That doesn't amplify. That just puts you the bees. But really, everybody different Yes, different Most of most of the bees up here are at risk in the next six six weeks or so when the population of bees starts to decline but the population of mites does not um all those treatments are are great my, my favorite is mite away quick strips the formic acid in the full dose nothing kills mites like formic acid in the, in, the, in the full so like if you're not killing mites mites are killing bees a seven-day treatment of of mite away quick strips, two pads, will will kill ninety nine percent of the mites, including the mites under the capics. It's the only treatment. Formic acid is the only treatment that does that. The other ones are great. They they'll kill mites, um, but they'll be more labor intensive. If you want to do oxalic acid every five days, five for for the next twenty five days, um, or um apa 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 var uh for for 42 to 56 days knowing that you're not going to have honey supers on in, in that time in the downsides of synthetic miticides knowing that there's a tolerance level and, and resistance level and depending on how it's used the 
the resistance increases. The thymol is great. Uh, two weeks for, I, I for a treatment, and you have I mean, to fix it. I'm a formic user too. Uh, it has the highest toxicity for sure on the beans and on the green, I would say, you know, especially when it's used appropriately, but it's, it's highly effective. They're, 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 Nothing kills mites like that. Like, yeah, nothing, like nothing kills mites or bees as well as formics. Yeah, and, and usually, well, usually you see a setback in your bees, right? Like you might see a setback for three weeks. Right. No, so you, maybe they were the weak bees anyway. They were the ones that no, were already it, susceptible. It, it, for those three you, weeks later, your brood looks amazing. For, for those of you who choose formic, you know, if you look three weeks after you apply formic, you're going to think, oh my goodness, what did I just do? If you come back three weeks later, your hives going to look. So there, there is that setback that you get with the moment that you just have to but, take a deep breath. In. But so, southern bees that are coming up from the south. I didn't know if they were unique. Yeah, yeah, they're, they, they're treated. Okay. Uh, other questions about mites or pet mites. <laughs> you know, if, if, you know, this was a great discussion today, I have to say. You know, we heard, we, you know, we, we heard from a bunch of club members. Uh, we heard from Chris. We heard from Frank. Uh, personally, uh, I'm a universal treatment guy, so I treat July, September, and December. So I use Formic in July. I use either Apigard or Apigar in September, and then I do Dribble in in uh, in December. Uh, one could easily say that's over treatment, and I and I would clearly uh, probably own that piece of it that I'm over treating my bees. Uh, my winter survival. Generally, if, if you effectively treat for mites, your winter loss should be about ten percent. Honestly, you know, uh, if, if you have, if, if, you know, so what, whatever, whatever methods that you're, and that's ten percent doesn't mean much if you have three hives in your backyard, but generally, it's about ten percent if you effectively manage mites over time. George, we need to move on. Uh, I have one more question. We have to, we have to get the question in the back. Apigard or Apigar. Whether or not you're going to choose the uh, synthetic versus organic. When I mentioned uh, my September treatment, my personal September treatment, I said Apigard or Apigar. I, I guess that just depends on the year. Some years I use Apigar, some years I, I use Apigar because I'm trying not to. I'm trying to use as little Apigar as possible just because of resistance. But uh, one half dozen I go. <laughs> I like formic in July, but it's a little bit of a hassle to try to figure out what three days to put it on your hive. And you have to be okay with some queen loss when you put formic because you're going to have some queen loss. Oxalic dribble in December is a total no brainer, honestly, uh, uh, except for if you just don't want to open up your hive and dribble oxalic on it, honestly. You know, I, I just think that knocking your mite levels down to nothing before winter occurs so they come out of spring without very little mites to me is a no, no brainer in it. So. Anyway, no, thanks. I, I thank everybody who contributed. Thank you to Chris for sure. Thank you to Frank. And thanks for everybody for listening to that. And, and this is not the end discussion on this, right? So please, you know, either join Beach Chat on Friday night, comment on the forum, ask your neighbor, you know, reach out. So you have, you, you're committed to what you're going to do and you'll learn from it. Don't be uncommitted because then you'll do nothing and nothing will happen.